Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at the parent function of a cubic function. So first, let's look at uh, the parent function. So the parent function of a cubic function would be given by f of x equals x cubed. A cubic function just means that the largest exponent is 3 or that the degree of the function is 3. Okay, so if we look at f of x equals x cubed, let's first start with a table of values because we can always use a table of values to help us and we're going to go really generic here. We're going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So we're going to plug these into our function. That's going to be negative 2 cubed, which will be negative 8. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. 0 cubed is 0. 1 cubed is 1. And 2 cubed is 8. Then we're going to graph these points. Negative 2, negative 8 is down here. Negative 1, negative 1. 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 8. And what we want to do is we want to connect these five points with nice smooth curves. This is a polynomial function. Polynomials have smooth curves. They don't have sharp points. So I'm going to do the best I can. We all know my graphing skills are subpar. Okay, that wasn't so bad. So a few observations about this graph. The point 0, 0 is a special point on this graph. It's called the point of inflection. And what that means, if you notice, I think you can even see it on my horrendous drawing, which is actually kudos to me for being able to do this. If you look to the left of it, you'll see that the graph here is concave down. To the right of it, the graph is concave up. Concave down just means that it's facing downward, right? So if, if you use your hand, your hand would be opening downward to represent the first part, and then it would be opening up to, to represent the right of the graph. So that's the point of inflection is where the concavity changes. Another thing about cubic functions is that they have, uh, they're symmetric about the origin, or we might say that they're an odd function. Um, symmetry about the origin just means that if I took this right half and rotated it 90 degrees, I would end up at the, the left half of the graph. So that's symmetry about the origin, or we say that it's an odd function. On the next few slides, we're going to look at some transformations of the cubic function. We want to keep in mind this is a function, so it follows all of those transformations that we've seen in previous videos. Let's take a look. So here we have 2, and then on the next slide we'll also see 2. And we want to see how is this graph different than the graph of the parent function. So first what I suggest doing is finding that point of inflection. So where does the concavity shift? Obviously, when I use a, a grapher, it turns out a lot better than when I try to do this by hand. Hopefully, you can see the point of concavity. It changes. So here it's down, and here it's up. That's just like the parent function, right? The parent function, it was down to the left and up to the right. So that should indicate to us that there's no reflections here. Uh, it looks like we're just dealing with a shift of the graph itself. Somebody took the graph and shifted it down and to the left. So let's identify what this point is. It's negative 2, negative 4. And so when we go to write our function, we're going to say g of x equals x plus 2 cubed minus 4. So remember, when it's within the function, which is that uh, horizontal change, the sign changes. And when it's not part of the function, when it's that vertical change, it looks kind of the same, so it would be like that. Now there's one more thing we need to make sure of. We need to make sure that there's no stretch or shrink. And one way we can do that is we can identify any other point on the graph other than the point of inflection. So I can use this point here. I could use this point here. There might be one more. Oh, I could use this. Ooh, that one has a zero. I like that. Let's use that one. So this one is zero, four. And what we're interested in is, is there a value uh, other than one that's stretching or shrinking the graph? So what we'll do is we're going to take 0, 4, and we're going to plug it in for x and g of x and just make sure that a equals 1, or if it doesn't, then we know that there is a stretch or shrink. So we're going to say 4 equals 0, oops, sorry, let's try that again, a times 0 plus 2 cubed minus 4. I'm going to add this 4 to both sides, so that gives me 8 equals this is going to be 2 cubed, which is 8, so I get 8 equals 8a. So in fact, a does equal 1. Oops, sorry. So because a is 1, we don't need to include an a. We can just say, okay, this equation is given by x plus 2 cubed minus 4. All right, looking at our next example, I do see that this time 
On the left, it's concave up, and on the right, it's concave down. So that indicates to me that A is going to be negative. Uh, we'll get to that. We don't have to worry about that right now. Let's just start by identifying the point of inflection. The point of inflection is 3, 2. So initially, when we write the equation for this function, we would say g of x equals the unknown a times x minus 3 cubed plus 2. Inside opposite, outside same. Now let's find another point on the graph. I don't see any zeros, so that's too bad. We'll use this one here. This is the point 2, 3, and we're going to use that to figure out the value of a. So I'm going to plug in 2 for x and 3 for g of x. That will give me 3 equals a times 2 minus 3 cubed plus 2. So that's going to be, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, and that'll give me 1 equals 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1, so that's going to be negative a. So I have 1 equals negative a, which means a equals negative 1. So as I suspected, a is negative. So I can write this equation, and I need to include the a this time, but we can just include a negative. We don't need the 1. So we're going to say g of x equals negative x minus 3 cubed plus 2. And this negative will ensure that the graph flips over some horizontal line. Okay, in our last two examples, let's find that point of inflection. I see that we're concave up on the left and concave right on the concave down on the right, indicating to me we probably have a negative a again. This time the point of inflection is right here at 1, 2. So we're going to go ahead and set up our equation g of x equals a times x minus 1 cubed plus 2. Now we want to determine this value of a. It does appear that there is some sort of stretch or shrink. So we're going to identify another point on the graph. We're going to find a nice point. This one right here looks good. That's negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we're going to use negative 1, 6. Um, negative 1 is x. 6 is g of x. So we're going to say 6 equals a times negative 1 minus 1 cubed plus 2. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, giving me 4 equals. This is negative 2 cubed, which is negative 8, times a. Divide both sides by negative 8. And we do, do have an interesting a here. We have a equals negative 1 half. So there was a, a shrink. So we have our a. We have our point of inflection. We can now write the equation of this function. That would be g of x equals negative 1 half times x, where is it, minus 1 cubed plus 2. In our last example, I noticed that the graph here is concave down and here is concave up, so this should have a positive a value. And I see that point of inflection appears to be right here on the y-axis at 0, negative 4. So initially starting this out, we're going to say g of x is equal to a times x cubed. I don't need to put it in parentheses since it would be x minus 0 cubed, which would just go back to being x cubed, minus 4. Now we want to identify another point on the graph, and lucky for us, there's a really nice point right here at 2, 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in 2 for x and 0 for g of x, and we're going to see what our a value is. I, I think it's going to be something other than 1. Let's find out. So we're going to say 0 equals a times 2 cubed minus 4. We're going to add 4 to both sides, so that's going to give me 4 equals 8a. Divide both sides by 8, and we end up with a equals 1 half. It is positive, as I suspected, and now we're ready to write our equation. For this last one, we're going to say g of x equals 1 half, oops, don't need the parentheses, 1 half x cubed minus 4.